Westerland. Yes, thank you very much, Council President. Um, I'll, I'll try to make my comments brief, but this is something I feel very passionate about. Um, Proposition 215, uh, the Compassionate Use Act of 1996, and the subsequent Senate Bill 420 are an absolute abortion of a law. They are just absolutely awful, terrible laws. And I don't think the average Californian had any idea that it was going to be this bad, that it was going to be meant that next door to you, families would be, next to your family, people would have eight, nine, nine foot high marijuana plants next door. And not just one or two, but 80 or 90 or 70. It is absolutely just, you know, I, I can't think of any other way to say it than it's just an absolute abomination of a law. Um, I only wish that we couldn't vote to outlaw it completely. Um, I'm a former prosecutor, and I can tell you that I uh, spent enough time doing particularly juvenile law to know that marijuana is a entry-use drug. And I can't tell you how many times we had children, I mean 12, 13, 14-year-olds, children in court who had serious drug addiction problems, hooked on meth, on forms of cocaine, forms of opium, and they all started with marijuana. All started with marijuana. And the probation reports bear it out every single time. You know what? Started when they were 12, smoking some marijuana that escalated into crack or escalated into meth. Um, you know what? And, and the sad thing is, is that these abortions of a law, Proposition 215 and 420, is that apparently there are some really very, very serious folks that this actually could help. But because the law is so bad, it is such, such garbage law that the people who might actually get some level of help out of it um, can't do so because the, the, the potheads um, have run, run the day here. And we've got unscrupulous scrupulous doctors who are willing to give these, uh, these medical use cards um, for, for headaches, for you know, gosh, I have stress, um, I have hangnails, or whatever it is, and, and it's absolutely uh, atrocious. Um, so I only wish that we could, we could legally ban it, and I'd be the first person to punch up to ban all medical marijuana use, all use um, in the city of Fresno. You know, until medical marijuana use is prescribed by a doctor, not recommended, but prescribed, where the doctor will put his or her medical license on the board, on the line, for a valid prescription, and that's done at the federal level, um, would those, those few people who really, truly, truly could benefit from this, um, that's the only way something like this could work. Otherwise, what we're seeing here, are we're seeing grows that are done absolutely positively for sheer profit, and, um, and don't tell me, don't tell me if we legalize it that that's going to make it go away. That is just a baloney BS joke, absolutely positively. And uh, I know they're working to get a proposition um, on the ballot. Let me go on to, to legalize marijuana. I'll, I'll be going on the record right now. Absolute garbage. And if anybody knows any better, don't vote for crap like that. So I'll make a motion to approve this. The only problem with this is that it forces it inside, and lots of these potheads and, and, and folks who are looking to make a, a easy buck have children, and it moves it in with children. Um, so if we're going to do anything, and I know we've had these discussions, Chief, and with Chief Dyer, um, you know, Anderson, California, I think, probably has the strongest um, one that I've seen so far in these kinds of ordinances that require it to be in an outside house. It can't be in a residence. It's got to have filtration systems. It's got to be burglar alarmed. It's got to be double locked. It's got to be, you know, and they make it very, very difficult for them to, to, to cultivate marijuana like this. And I think um, that is at the very least what we have to do. So I'll make a motion to approve the emergency ordinance. Is there a second? Second by Member Baines. Uh, Member Borges. Couple questions. 
The first is, this is a proposed interim urgency ordinance uh, for a temporary prohibition of outdoor cultivation uh, in all districts in the incorporated areas of the city. The department intends to seek a permanent ban through an amendment to the municipal code. Yes. How come we're just not doing that now? We are. We're having a bifurcated process, and certainly uh, the city's attorney office can talk about the process, but the interim gives us an opportunity to move forward today while we go ahead and craft the permanent ban. And certainly there'll be, there's a process, there'll be public discussion, debate, as well as meetings with the, uh, uh, certainly uh, a number of entities, air quality being one. But there will be a process. This gives us the opportunity to ban it now. Well, I guess, and I'm, I'm certainly supportive of this. I just don't understand why we're not putting our efforts into pursuing the permanent ban we are. The, the issue is one of timing. If we were to initiate the process under the normal circumstances, you would move through. It's, in essence, a land use amendment. You'd go through a process of the Planning Commission. The City Council would then act. You'd have the introduction, the adoption, what we talked about earlier on the previous uh, proposed ordinance, uh, the mayor's veto. Sorry. Oh, and we would also have to look at the uh, Airport Land Use Commission as well. So we have a number of steps for a permanent ordinance. Our concern is that the cultivation timing uh, could occur, and if, in fact, it occurs now uh, in the county's uh, uh, efforts, they found that the judge was open to allowing that that was um, planted to be uh, harvested, and they uh, allowed the, they de delayed the effectiveness of the county's ordinance so our concern is we want to capture the cultivation on the front end. We want to deal with it now. The interim ordinance allows you to do it immediately, and then while that's in place, we're moving through the process of getting the permanent ordinance. All right, so if, uh, if Member Zhang were a grower, for say, <laughs> and he had, he had a plant, or someone, someone has a plant, and the, the law allows for this to exist uh, on, on, on Monday, and cultivation is going to take place on, on Tuesday, do they not then have a property right uh, that since it was permissible to enable it to grow, that they would then be able to still harvest? That's the argument that will be made. From our standpoint, the research that we've done with PD, the cultivation is actually going to occur within the next 30 days. Uh, the planting will occur. Okay. And so we believe that we'll capture the vast majority of any of the planting. And with that timing, then, we will have as, as great an effect as we can uh, with the, the ordinance on the emergency side. I'm sorry, Belong. You know what? I shouldn't keep on using you as an example. <laughs> um, this, is, this is really unusual that uh, we're having this, these issues back to back. What are we doing with the county uh, on this issue? Are we working with the county at all to craft? Because... You know, with, with all the different county islands and all the different uh, rules that can pertain in one area versus the other, are we looking to create identical legislation with the county? Yeah, the county has an ordinance in play right now. And so ours mirrors. mirrors. It will be yes. identical to that. Yes. All right. Um, okay. Thanks. Okay. Member Olivier. Thank you, President Brand. Uh, you know, I, I'm thinking about it, and I'm thinking about a promise that I made to myself and everyone here when I first took office, and that was that I wouldn't vote for anything uh, that was that was uh, put forward as an emergency or something urgent, something that needs to be done now. Uh, that's because I think that democracy works best and the process works best when we have a, uh, a longer time to, to weigh things and study things and understand things. And while I understand that the use of marijuana and drugs is, uh, destroys families, destroys finances, creates crime, destroys human life, uh, and that it's serious business here, I find myself wanting to stay true to, to my belief that, uh, that bad things happen when, when governing bodies panic and legislatures panic and the sort. So um, I, w I won't be supporting this today um, while I feel... Uh, that it's important to to help you do your job to protect lives and property, uh, and I and I commend you 
that you're the best in the state and the country at, at doing that. Um, um, it would be my hope that we could um, n not pass this uh, because of its, uh, I don't believe that there's a sense of urgency. Um, case in point, uh, what was, what's, um, we, um, Captain Garner had a, um, a street fair on, on, it wasn't the one on U Street, I think it was on Clay. And what's, what are those events called? It seems to have, yeah, the block parties, okay. There, there was a block party, and we were all out there, and, uh, you know, the bounce house and the shave ice and the face painting, and it was, it was fantastic. Those kinds of things are important uh, to do. And, you know, from here to that silver door, there was a, a plyboard fence around, you know, an eight-foot-tall plyboard fence around somebody's front yard, and above that were, you could see the, the tops of the, of the marijuana plants. This person was uh, just in, in full view of, of the world, and, and including the block party and everybody that, that goes along with that. Uh, this person was growing the marijuana in, in his or her front yard. Uh, and it was just an, inter an interesting thing to see, to watch the residents of my district working um, to take back their street from this kind of crime. And, and, and here's the, the marijuana growing right there in front of us. So, um, you know, I, I'm not going to be able to support it because of the, because of the sense of urgency. My, my personal value, uh, my, my personal values uh, prevent me from, from voting for emergency measures. I prefer if we would have done it the long way. Um, and, and, and that's how I'm going to vote on this today. And, and if, if, if it fails, then we can bring it back and we can, we can go the long way through it. Uh, and, and then I would be more more willing and more open to uh, to seeing it go through. And uh, as far as marijuana being a, a gateway drug, um, I, I did spend enough time on on the streets as a journalist to know that when when there are domestic crimes, when there are murders, when there are violent crimes, those people have drugs in their system. They also have alcohol in their system because people use alcohol as they're using drugs. And I think that if we're going to talk about gateway drugs and, and um, how people's lives can be touched by drug use, I think alcohol is where, where people start. And I think that they use alcohol uh, along with everything. So, I mean, you want to talk about soul-destroying drugs, uh, alcohol is definitely one. And, and we can get that at the liquor store. So, um, you know, I... I uh, Thank you and, uh, and, and applaud the work you do, and I thank you for bringing this forward, but I won't be supporting it today. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Member 6 0, member Olivier voting no. Thank you, guys. Thanks for waiting all the time. It's a long time, too. Okay.